So last week I talked a little bit about expanding the channel and so this is going to be the first test in that expansion and I'm going to show how I sculpted this little baby Yoda. So I started out with a few different colors of clay that I was going to need to blend to get the colors I wanted. I started with kind of an olive green, added in some white and some tan and just kind of kneaded that back and forth, rolled it around and this is for the body, the head, the ears. I also needed some to make the robe and so for that I mixed a tan and a brown and I had to add a little more brown to get the color that I really wanted. I also used some firm Super Sculpey to make kind of a tater tot shaped piece. This is to act as the body. The color doesn't matter because it's going to be covered. I cut a piece of aluminum wire to insert into the body to connect the head and you, you could probably get away without doing this but I wanted to make sure that the head plus the ears didn't, uh, didn't get broken off. Next I came up with the head which just try to get the right shape and then get that mounted on and begin kind of forming it to the shape that I want. I used a ball stylus to form kind of the, the uh, holes for the eyes, the eye sockets. And then for the eyes I used some black clay, rolled it into a snake, cut a couple even sized sections off of that and rolled those into ball shapes. Uh, I did have to kind of play with those a little bit to get the right size. I ended up having to make each of them a little bit smaller because they were too big. And I just stuck the eyes in just as they were because I was going to be adding eyelids and brows later. That would help to hold those in. Using the same clay that I used to make the head, I rolled a lot of small snakes to build up the eyelids and kind of the brow line and beneath the eyes. And I repeated this several times before I finally got the thickness that I was after. So some of that I've trimmed out just because it was kind of the same thing over and over. While I was at it, I made a really small nose. And here I'm just kind of building up the lower eyelids the cheekbones a little bit. And like I said, I went through this several, several times and I cut out about two-thirds of the snakes that I used to put on the eyes. I used a smaller ball stylus to help kind of try to define and smooth out the face a little bit. I made a snake for the mouth and the chin, made a couple more balls of that same green to kind of build out the cheeks, and used a small ball stylus to kind of try to blend that in. It was at about this time that I wish I would have had a, uh, a spoon tool, which I have now, but I didn't then. Next came the ears, and if you've seen Baby Yoda, like his ears are more disproportionate than regular Yoda, so I tried to make them roughly the same width as his face each ear so that they would really stick out. And then just kind of trim them to get them to match as much as I could. I just used the ball stylus here as well to try to blend that seam together to help hold these in place. Once they were both on, I also tried to define some of the ear shape a little bit and smooth the, the transition from the ear to the face. Next is his little robe, and I did this by just making a thin sheet of one of the mixes of brown that I made, and then once that was all the way wrapped around, just kind of used my fingers and a ball stylus to kind of stretch and blend that together so that it looks like one piece of cloth. Next I mix some dark brown and some white. This is to be his little soup cup. So I rolled that around and used the 
ball stylus, the big one, to kind of give some depth and an opening to his little soup cup. And then used an X-Acto knife to try to kind of flatten the top of it, which sort of worked, but also deformed it a little bit. So it probably, probably didn't need that. Next, I wanted to make the collar of his little robe. So I rolled out a snake of some tan that I had mixed together earlier and wrapped that around. Made sure to kind of form it in place with the ball stylus and then I used a dental tool to go around and give it kind of some furry texture and also add some nostrils to his nose. That's a really small detail that nobody's ever gonna see, but I wanted to see what I could do. Next, I wanted to kind of color in the bottom part of his body, even though it's never going to be seen. So I just used a round, flat piece of the same color, put that on, and next are his feet. Once I got those on, then I used that same dental tool to kind of give him some toes. And then I made another snake of kind of a, a pearl-colored clay that has kind of a chitonience to it. And I cut little tiny pieces off of that to be his toenails. Later on, I do the same thing for his hands. Then I needed to make his arms and hands. And the hands I did very similar to the feet. And in the end, I kind of wish I would have spread his hands a little bit further apart, and you'll see why. I got some bacon bomb there to help attach it to his stomach, but then I thought better of it and clipped a little piece of wire to go in between to really secure that down. Next are his arms. This is the same mix of clay that I used to make his vest, or to make his robe. And I made little cuffs for that as well with that same tan mix. And the arms turned out okay, but here you can kind of see why I wish I would have moved the, the arms, or sorry, the hands a little closer to his body. I think it would have looked a little bit better. And I blended that together with the ball tool, or with the ball stylus, and also added some texture again. And my hands are always really warm, and so it has a tendency to melt the clay. So I have to go back several times to re-add certain details and textures. Here I also just wanted to kind of fill out the bottom of his robe so it didn't look like it was pulled up against his body. Then I needed to make a base for him to stand on. This is again some firm super sculpey that I just kind of made into the shape of what's supposed to end up being some dirt and rocks. Put some steel wire in there and try to, to very slowly push his body down onto this little pedestal because I didn't want to, I wanted to avoid deforming his body at all with the pressure it takes to get him on there. And then I made a couple of rocks to be next to him and used some uh, bacon bond on the big one and the smaller ones I just kind of pushed into place. And at this point I'm trying to build out his brow and kind of that brow line because I didn't really have that before. and also kind of thicken out his forehead so that I could come in and kind of smooth that out to get ready to make the wrinkles on the top of his head. So I used the dental tool for the bigger one and then uh, and another tool to kind of blend that out. And then I used some clay softener. I brushed that over the whole thing to try to get rid of as many of my fingerprints as I could. It did okay, but I, that is a part of this process I need to work on. I did get worried that the ears would droop as this gets baked, and so I inserted a piece of steel wire through his head and into each ear to help support it. I'm not sure whether I really needed that or not, but after all the time it took me to make this, I really didn't want to end up with droopy ears after it gets baked. I also needed to color in his ears, so I took some pastels, white and red, shaved those, added, I tried to just brush it on, but that didn't really work, so I added some liquid Sculpey kind of turned it into a clay-based paint and painted the inside of his ears with that. And that 
is looking pretty good so far. So next I baked him with this polymer type clay. You bake it to turn it into kind of a plastic and that solidifies the whole thing. Then I painted the base brown and I tried using some Sculpey satin glaze, but it ended up too shiny. Next I needed to paint the rocks, so I just mixed a bunch of different colors that I had. I didn't have a plain color that I liked for the rocks, so I used kind of this grayish mess to color the rocks in, let that dry, and then made a couple of other colors to use on the smaller rocks to kind of help differentiate those a little bit. And then I did kind of a dry brush over different parts of, of the pedestal to just kind of help make it look more like dirt, like he's out in a natural environment. It's kind of what I was going for. And I've never dry brushed before. Then I added some UV resin over his eyes to make him glossy. And I also added several drops of UV resin into his cup to act as the soup. To color it, since UV resin is clear, I shaved some tan and brown pastel, put that into the cup, stirred it around, and then applied a UV light to cure both his eyes and the soup. Like I said, I wasn't happy with how the, the glaze turned out, so I got some matte water-based polyurethane and kind of just brushed that over the whole thing, except for the eyes and the soup. I, I tried to be really careful not to touch those because I wanted both of those to stay glossy. And this actually worked pretty well, I think. As I got to looking at it, I really didn't like the eyes being solid black. It made it look a little bit too much like a, an alien, so I mixed together some darker colors to try to paint in a brown iris in each eye. And I don't have very steady hands, so it was pretty hard to paint that small. So I had to come back in with some black paint to put the pupil back in. And of course I had to put my maker's mark on it in the ear and then redo the UV resin on the eyes. And again with the UV light, cure it. And now he's basically done. And that's all there is to it. It's not extremely uh, realistic, but I'm pretty happy with it for my first sculpt of trying to make something actually look like an existing thing. So there may be more of these videos coming out. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Kind of depends on what ideas I get and how well they turn out as to whether that's something I'm going to want to share or not. But I don't know. Let me know what you think. Subscribe if you want to see more of this stuff or my normal shop stuff. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.